production design is its own character in this movie. And I think that uh, our team has just done an amazing job of interpreting Alfonso's needs and desires to create this world, which is the near future. It's a world we all recognize. It's shabby and frayed at the edges. The idea was that we would keep it to a sort of dusty, sparrow-like colors. In fact, the whole, the whole essence of the film was going to be sad. I had this conversation with Alfonso early on that he said, you know, our natural instinct is to go for the visually strong. But on this occasion, it's wrong, because we're working in a real world, and often we're looking for ugly locations that don't photograph so well. But they're real situations, they're real worlds. Rule number one in the film is recognizability. We don't want to do Blade Runner. Actually, we, we talk about being the anti-Blade Runner in the sense of how we were approaching reality. And that was kind of difficult for the art department, because I would say, I don't want inventiveness, I want reference. You know, it's uh, don't show me the great idea. Show me the reference in real life. And more important, I would like as much as possible references of iconography, contemporary iconography, that is already engraved in human consciousness. What we thought was that we would take it to today's actually 2010, and then everything would start just getting old and tired looking. And because there's no money coming into the infrastructure, then therefore that would start disintegrating. As humanity is bound to finish, uh, there is a constant disenchantment. There's no need for maintenance. Why are you going to be maintaining things that are going to, that anyway, the, the humanity collapsed? You've got a middle group of people living in a society that has little or no infrastructure or money for infrastructure. So things like the garbage bags that you see everywhere in the film is because there is no pickup, there's no one to do that particular job. And we had a lot of water damage and road damage. And many of the things that would not have advanced, farms, certain urban areas that don't have the money anymore and children aren't coming up and, you know, I mean, what do you even have schools for? So if you don't need schools because you don't have any children, you're not going to ultimately put, put money into them. So what are your schools going to look like? They're actually going to deteriorate. They're not going to get more advanced. You're not going to have the school of the future and phenomenal computer screens everywhere and kids running. You're going to have empty, vacant, weed-grown places. But there were areas that we felt that would continue with technology, and that would be things like cars. It was a little complex because we have to craft cars that they are not distracting, meaning that you, you don't even pay attention to the cars. They just look normal. But uh, if you want to focus in the future element in the, in the movie, you can focus in the car and realize that you've never seen those cars before. So it was the level of damage that we would use to all the futuristic elements. I said to Alfonso, in 20 years, people don't change. People are still wearing, especially in certain countries where they were wearing 20 years ago, in the 80s, 90s, we are still wearing the same sort of clothes. So Alfonso was very, very agree. He said they have to look extremely normal. That's what's frightening. So on purpose, uh, I dress them exactly in the same sort of thing that we are wearing now. So they look dirty and, and run down. When you read a script like this, you sort of look for the difficult bits, you know, the things that are going to cause problems. You are under the jurisdiction of the fishes. And there was one scene in particular that Clive Owen has taken into a room that's covered in newspapers, and it was described as being walls, ceilings, floor, entirely covered by newspapers. Cut the lights. And we realized that, in fact, these all, new, all these newspapers would have to be generated because it's 2027, and therefore what was happening in 2027 or 2026 if they had some old newspapers. And then we needed, really needed a timeline of what would happen from present day to the year 2027. So Tim Sexton and Alfonso started thinking about it, and then we all, co we all collaborated on various things that would happen during that period of time. And that's how we did the newspapers to start with. It was so labor intensive. If you can imagine, you actually had to write newspaper articles and headlines and create the photographs that go on a headline on a newspaper. That was actually quite tricky. Usually, it's people trying to get out of Bix Hill, not in. Sid doesn't know why you want to get in. Sid doesn't want to know. 
send the horse guard. And then, of course, we had the refugees coming in, so they would start building shanty towns. And then we determined that there was no light, there was no heating, and England is cold in the winter. Therefore, the shanty towns wouldn't be made of wood, they'd be made of metal. Wood would be burned. When we were putting the shanty towns together at one of our weekly meetings, Alfonso said to me, there's no color in the shanty towns. He said, have you been to India and seen the shanty towns in India? And I said, yes, I have. He said, well, have you been to Mexico? And I said, yes, I have. He said, well, they have color, don't they? And I said, yes, they do. They're hot climates, and this is England, and it's cold, and it would. <laughs> and so this was where we had, we had our, our differences, in that, um, you know, that there wasn't a great deal of color in our shanty towns because of, it was England. The Ministry of Arts, or the Ark of Arts, which was great fun to do. We found the statue of David. We shipped that from the Italian studios in Rome because they had this wonderful copy. And um, this enormous thing turned up. Then that day in the Italian newspapers, there had been an article about Italy losing its heritage. And the image that they chose was the statue of David with its leg cut off. And that was one of the things that we were able to achieve in post. We didn't actually chop up the statue, only that I'd wanted to at the time. <laughs> Italy said no. Let's try to do our first few things. Once that we feel that we did one, two, we're happy, let's go one. There's been no cheats, there's been no cheapness. It's been absolutely the best that it could be with every detail paid attention to. And I think that really goes down to the filmmaking. I mean, Alfonso had a vision and universal, and all of us supported it. And I think the product shows. The whole style of the movie which Alfonso wants to make is very documentary in its style. It's not a job where a production designer comes with a big visual concept and says, look at this world, isn't this exciting? It's providing a world and an environment full of texture, full of reality, which can allow the action to take place. We decided not to, uh, in terms of what you see, not to see the future, but try to recognize the present. But together with that, we took this more uh, this documentary approach. And that allows for the characters to flow in this universe in a more naturalistic kind of way. He was passionate about detail, and um, we used to get, laughingly, we referred to it as a 6.30 phone call, because it was always the night before that he would suddenly then come up with another whole idea that had to be on the set at 7 o'clock the next morning. <laughs> But he engaged everyone politically and emotionally in this film, and that's why it was so exciting to work on it. <laughs>